Okay, in this video, we'll be looking at the sweep exercise, which is part of the part design using Part Studios tutorial in the Onshape um, CAD Fundamentals learning pathway. So let's jump right into it. Um, we are going to uh, create this paper clip. And so we're going to start by um, creating a couple of sketches. So the first sketch will be in the top plane. Once again, we're going to set our workspace units to millimeters. Um, we're going to use that top uh, plane. Okay, so make sure that our units are set to millimeters. And we'll go ahead and create a sketch in the top plane. And we'll look at that top plane. And I'm going to go ahead and press P to turn off those other planes. So we're going to create this um, sketch here. This is basic path of the um, paper clip. So this is not going to be the paper clip itself. This will be the, the path of the center line of the uh, paper clip. So we'll just kind of draw that. Um, I'm going to make sure that when I draw these that I'm drawing um, tangent arcs uh, to these. And uh, so let's get started. So there's no construction lines in this at all. Um, I'm going to start here, I'll come down here, draw another line. Down here. So this one's going to go all the way down here. Mine's going to be, I think, a little skinnier than this to start with. Let's start another line. And so I've got this line, I've got this line, I need this one and this one. So I'll draw another line inside here. And again, you need to worry about it looking exactly like they have it here um, to begin with. Um, just going to place it there and see. Now, uh, I might have some different constraints in here that might cause me some problems, but let's just take a look at this. So I do, I want to pull these off and I want to make sure that's all I think. This one's okay, this one's okay, but these two right here I want to pull in. So I'm going to pull that in. Yeah, see, it's doing all of those. So I want to get rid of that horizontal constraint. Um, so right here, I'm just going to delete that. And right here. And I think that will take care of it. So I'm going to pull this one over now. Oh, it's still done. Okay, so I'm going to back up here and undo some of those. And I think that will just be easier than trying to mess around with those uh, constraints. So I'll create one here. I can choose L to stop the line, L to start a new line. And just make sure that I've got a short one here. I want these to line up, so I'm going to come here and here. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and put my arcs in. So I'm going to use tangent arcs. And make sure that I'm tangent here and here. Make sure that I'm tangent here and here. And I need those on the other end. So I want these to line up. So I want to make sure that I make those vertical. So this one and this one vertical to each other. That's not what I needed. Okay, I think I've got it now. Uh, so I have those vertical, let's go ahead and put my arc in there. And so you can see that paying attention to those um, constraints as you're drawing them makes it a whole lot easier um, 
So I was having kind of a hard time getting those things to line up because I wasn't and pay close attention to that detail um, when I was making my sketch. So you can see here my sketch is not fully defined yet. I've got a bunch of blue lines in there. So I think in the next step I'll add some dimensions to that. So um, we want to make sure that those endpoints are vertical, which we've done. We want to make sure that these are lined up. So let's go back and kind of fix this up a little bit. I want to make sure that these are horizontal. So this and this. And I want to make sure that those two, these two points here are vertical. So this, this, it's not what I wanted. Vertical, this and this. There we go. So those are lined up. Um, those are all vertical. Those are vertical. Um, so I think I'm good there. So now we'll go through and put some uh, dimensions on that. So 75, 20. And then 25, 125. And then a uh, radius of 15 down here on the end. Okay, so it looks like our sketch is fully defined there. We've got all the lines are black. I think it's behaving the way we want it to. Um, if I change the length of this dimension right here, I should see this point move as well. And so I do. Set that back to 75. And so it looks like our model is behaving the way that we want it to so far. Okay, next step, um, we'll go ahead and finish that. Um, we're going to rename it as the path sketch. So uh, I want to change the name of it here. And so I'll call it the path. In the prior exercises, we just had one path that we were dealing with, so the, the name of it didn't matter so much, but here we're going to have multiple paths, so we're going to make sure that we give them separate names so that they're easy to distinguish from each other. Uh, so we move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to create a new sketch on the right-hand um, plane, and so we're going to go back to uh, our isometric view here. And I'm going to hit P to turn on those planes again so I can see those. I'll create a new sketch on the right hand plane. And go ahead and that looks good. And I'm going to type P again to turn off those um, orthogonal planes. And so we're just going to draw a circle somewhere and put a five millimeter dimension on. And so as we look at that from the side, our um, paperclip path will actually just look like a straight line. So switch over to here, we'll switch to the right plane, and you can see there's our path. And we're just going to draw a five millimeter circle. Oops. Dimension. Okay. And Looks good. So, um, and then we're going to go and, and make those coincident. So, we're going to place that circle right on the end of our paperclip path there. So, we'll switch back to our uh, isometric view and then we'll come in here and make a um, coincident constraint. So, we want to put this and this right on top of each other. Okay. All right. So, I think we're set there. Uh, we're going to rename this sketch. We're going to call this the profile sketch, and we'll finish off that. That good. Okay, 
then the next part will actually go through and create that. So what's going to happen is that circle is going to just travel along that pathway and turn along with it. And so it'll, it'll project that um, circle all the way along that pathway. So uh, as we create that, um, that sweep, uh, we want to use our profile sketch um, as the thing we're going to sweep. And our sweep path is going to be the path sketch. So we're going to create a sweep. And um, so the thing that we're going to sweep is this circle here. And our pathway is going to be this one. Whoops. And you see that I can go and choose these individually, or I can just actually choose the whole. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of this. There we go. And do it right. Path sketch. That's the one we want right there. Okay, there we see it come in. All right, so we've got, um, let's go through that one more time here. So I'm going to create a new sweep. Okay. And um, for this, I can just simply select this, or I can come in here and say, this is the profile. I want to use that profile. And then for the path, I'm going to go in here and just choose the path. And again, I can go through and choose the individual elements, or I can just choose the path itself. And so there, let me go through that. So hopefully that's a little more clear. Um, and I think uh, that's all we're going to do there. See, so we'll create that part, and then we'll rename that part paperclip. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Now we've got a new part down here, and we'll rename that to be paperclip. Assign some materials to it. So we're going to use um, 1060 aluminum. That's almost okay there. And then um, we should be able to go and select that paper clip and then look at the mass properties of it. There we go. And then look at the mass properties of it. And that should tell us um, the properties of our. And so this one, they're using um, grams here because it's such a small part. It doesn't really make sense to use kilograms to measure the, the mass of a uh, paper clip. So um, notice that my mass here is showing as kilograms. So I'm just going to go up here and change my workspace units to be grams. Accept that, and then if I go back and look at the mass properties now, now it tells me the grams. All right. Okay, so that one was a little more tricky, so hopefully you didn't get uh, too lost like I did. And uh, thanks for watching.